downtown. Anyone in the room that's formerly incarcerated that hasn't been there, come down. If you want to get involved, if you want to get into any of the union apprenticeships or anything, come on down. Uh, all my people are here at the front table and at the back table. Um, uh, visit the website, arc-ca.org. Make a donation. None of this happens without money. Um, volunteer, mentor, and just everyone you can talk to, tell the stories uh, of the incredible people that are here in this room today at Cal State LA that have struggled with drugs and struggled with gangs and struggled with addiction and struggled with, with everything uh, and poverty and are sitting here today and have made huge changes in their lives. To me, it's just changing people's hearts and minds. You do that and everything changes. In the back. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's mainly what we do. So the day someone gets out, juvenile hall, camp, YA, prison, wherever, county jail, um, we tell them to come down to our office. They immediately, they sit with a life coach. They go through what they need. If they need housing, we plug them into either our housing or our partners. If they need a job, we send them through a job, job training that my man Adrian right here does. And eight, this dude right here, uh, just look for his big ass bald head. Um, this, this dude right here literally has gone out and met with like CEOs of companies, general managers at like 50 different Starbucks stores, Home Depots. Literally he has like 20 businesses that three years ago would not hire any of our, our folks who now hire our folks every time we make a call. Uh, Adrian is the reason we have the, uh, the union apprentices and he runs that program with Isaac. Um, so as soon as someone comes down, we'll plug them into whatever they need. Uh, the only requirement is that they're formally incarcerated. And the, the only requirement is that they're formally incarcerated and want to change, right? If you're formally incarcerated and you still want to gangbang to the fullest, then go somewhere else. Like, we, we ask people to sign a, a commitment when they come in, and the commitment is not that they'll be perfect, but the commitment is that they will strive to be crime-free, gang-free, drug-free, in school and working and willing to be of service to the community. I say the word strive. If you relapse, are we gonna kick you out? No, right? But we want people that want to change. If you don't want to change, go somewhere else. That's it. And if you do want to change, the day you get out, come out, and we'll give you, we'll give you everything we can. We'll give you all the support possible. We'll direct you, but you gotta hustle. We're not gonna get the job for you. You have to hustle. I love that my own guy is like planning questions like he doesn't know anything about it else too. <laughs> he works in the policy department, so he was visiting one to shout, he just shout out the shit he's working on. Um, but I will because I did it, Jesse, and you're exactly right. Um, uh, we are co-leading a campaign uh, to end cash bail in California. Um, and I think that's one of the heaviest lists this year. There's no reason that if I committed a crime, I can bail out that day, and someone that's poor commits the exact same crime, and they have to sit in prison for, in jail for two years fighting that case. That's a tax on the poor, it's ridiculous, it's insane, it's racist, it's stupid, and we're gonna get rid of it. Um, we have a bill that's completely and totally ending life without parole sentences for juveniles in, entirely, uh, and that's gonna be a huge lift. Uh, we have a bill that actually will prohibit a police officer from questioning a juvenile unless their lawyer is present. So that basically, you can imagine how, how much the uh, law enforcement hates that bill because they know if a juvenile talks to their lawyer, they're not gonna then say everything that happened. Um, and there is an enormously high rate of false confessions amongst juveniles uh, because law enforcement keeps them in an interrogation room for 30 hours and all they wanna do is go to sleep and law enforcement is allowed to lie to them. Law enforcement is allowed to not tell their parents for 30 hours where they are. This is all legal. And kids often just confess just so they can get out because the cops are telling them, if you tell us this, you won't have to do time. And then they tell them and they lock them up and it's over because they've confessed. Um, and so we even have an ARC member that did 21 years in prison because there was a 30 hour interrogation. And he said it just because he wanted to go to sleep. And it took 21 years 
for folks to say, we're sorry we kept you in here, you're innocent. And um, we're working on a bill uh, to allow juveniles and young adults who committed crimes uh, to expunge their record. And now, because of Prop 57, it now allows us for the first time ever to allow those who committed violent crimes and are not out doing well to actually allow them to expunge their entire record. Um, we're working on a bill with Senator Bradford to uh, end gun enhancements um, and greatly, greatly reduce gun enhancements. Um, and there may be some more surprises coming up. Uh, but my man Jesse De La Cruz in the back of the room is working on all those policies. Um, and thank you, Jesse. <laughs> man, Jesse even got a round of applause for pretending like he didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you for the work that you do. Thank you, brother. With Kit Kat. So yeah, yeah. Were you, were you up there? Yes, yes. Were you part of Kit Kat? Yes. What's your name? JC. JC, what's up, brother? Uh, Welcome home. Thank After how long? 22 years and 17. 22 years and 17 years old. Like him? So, so before Governor Brown, he would have no option other than to die in prison because the past governor said the only way you're paroling is in a pine box. And uh, who's your commissioner? Fritz. Damn, that's a tough one, too. Yes. Um, wow, that tells me a lot about you. Welcome home, bro. Thank you. My question is, how supportive is the governor of what you're trying to do? And uh, being that this is his last term, anticipating Gavin Newsom replacing him, what's your feel about that? Um, this governor is one of the most incredible people I've ever met. And in terms of everything that I talked about today, and I think everyone, what everyone in this room believe, uh, believes in, um, this guy's with you. He realized when he was the governor, he was the governor in 1975, where he signed the Determinate Sentencing Act, which basically had us go from 12 prisons to 35 prisons. And he has the balls to stand up in front of the media from everybody and say, I screwed up, and I'm here to fix it. And as you know, you're probably the over 5,000 lifer that he's paroled. Um, and this guy has paroled more lifers than, any, than all the governors combined in the last 100 years. Um, and we did Prop 57 together. I sat with him quite a bit and brainstormed what Prop 57 was gonna be. And after we passed Prop 57 and the DAs went against us and they put ads on the TV talking about how rapists and murderers were all gonna get out of prison and rape and murder your entire family and uh, tried to scare the public and we needed 50% to win, and we got 64% and kicked their ass. Um, this governor, I was with him that night on election day, and he looked to us and he goes, okay, what's next? He goes, I got two more years left and we have a lot more to do. So I think you're gonna see a lot more from him in the next two years. And I think if Gavin Newsom or Antonio Villaraigosa um, end up becoming our next governor, I think we'll, we'll be good. Um, I even think John Chung, our treasurer, um, might be good as well. So I, I think I think we're in an okay shape. I hope I don't regret those words, but I think we're in okay shape. Questions, comments? Yes. Yes. I love the, I, it, it's maybe the only one in LA I haven't visited. Yeah. I'd love to, thank you. <laughs> and by the way, I, I, I didn't say this, but the governor appointed me to the Board of Governors for the whole community college system, so now I oversee all the community colleges in the entire state. So I'd love to, how, how long I can help, I'd love to help. Any other questions? Uh, two more, right there. Yeah, for sure. Those are my favorites. Those are my favorite because I, I, I think every day, at, at some point, everyone wakes up. I was, uh, 
I was at, at, at uh, where was it? It was Kern Valley State Prison. And I was talking to a, a Mexican Mafia member who had been in the SHU for 30 years and is now out on the main line. And he's in his 60s now. And uh, I was talking to him, and we are just one-on-one, -on -one, so he didn't have to put the mask on and play the Mexican Mafia member role. And I'm like, how do you feel? And he said, I'm exhausted. He goes, I wish I never did this. I wish I never got validated as a member. I wish I never made this decision. Um, I want to be home with my family. This life sucks. Um, and it sucks that it took him to age 65 to come to that realization, or at least articulate that realization. And I feel like every single person ends up realizing this at some point. Um, and so I don't get turned off by someone in juvenile hall or county jail or prison or wherever that isn't ready to hear the message. Because I, I, I believe I, I believe in planting seeds and like just letting them know these things. So when that time comes, when they go out to visit their mother behind glass or their child behind glass and their family's crying because they can't even have a contact visit and hug their loved one, and that person goes back to their cell and starts to rethink all those decisions, um, at that point they're going to remember what I said even if they didn't hear it then. So when I walk into juvenile hall and I see some new kid that has his face all blasted with tattoos, that's the one that I'm excited to talk to because his mask is much thicker than the others for reasons that aren't uh, the fact that he's so tough. So hope that answers it. Uh, two, last two. Um, yes, ma'am, and then you in the back. Thank you. I work with the Los Angeles Commission in the Arizona Detention. And two times I've had to go to court and try to speak for a young woman who is in the process of being um, getting a sentence and trying to get an extension for a two hour um, location as a part of their sentence. And the toughest experience I've had is dealing with the uh, lesbian and the indigenous community. So, Yeah, no, I think it's a great question. Um, for the longest time, we never talked to DAs, especially on the work we were doing in Sacramento, because everyone's like, they oppose every bill, so why talk to them? Like, there's no nuance that they're never going to support. And on SB 261, we went and met with them, the DAs Association, and we brought a bunch of folks who had used to be locked up. And in one hour-long meeting with a bunch of parolees who were doing great, they decided not to oppose a bill that was going to allow 14,000 people to go to the parole board and get out of prison, which is unheard of. Um, and I just realized in that moment, if we're really going to make the progress we want to make, um, we need to try to change as many hearts and minds as possible, including a DA. Um, if we realize that they're never going to change and they're just a racist pig, um, then I have a... Um, what's called a super PAC, which is a big pot of money that me and about 20 other people are going to use to knock their asses out of office because they're elected officials and if they're racist and if they send kids to, to adult prisons and if they use the death penalty in a crazy way and if they use all these enhancements, it's going to be very easy to run a campaign against them and to put someone in that actually has some compassion and fairness. Um, so I think first, like try to change hearts and minds as much as possible. And if that doesn't work, take their asses out. Yeah. Um, I think in terms of just talking to Andrew, last night, last night I, I, I went to dinner with two judges, both of whom were hardcore gang prosecutors in the LADA's office, that I know because they were prosecuting my kids and trying to send them to prison for 30, 40 years. And I walked my ass into their office and I said, you need to rethink this. And they, they called me a pest. Um, because I would never stop screaming and yelling. 
Um, but it's, we've developed a friendship now. So I go to dinner with the two, these two now, or two judges, who have become much more progressive and liberal now that they're judges and they're not in the DA's office anymore. But what do I do? I don't just go to dinner with them. I brought two formerly incarcerated people, one kid that had gotten out of YA, and one guy that got out of prison four days ago after 10 years, and sat him down at this nice dinner table and made these judges hear their testimony and hear how they changed and hear what it was like in prison for two hours. And literally, both of these judges afterwards texted me and they said that was the most amazing dinner I've ever had. And I can guarantee you, when they sit on the bench right now, starting today, they're going to look at the people in front of them in a different way. So continue to push, and every time you can show a positive story of someone that has really changed and who has helped themselves, even if the system didn't help them, that's how I see all these people change, even the people who are our, our enemies and our opponents. Yeah, thanks for your work, man. So the answer is absolutely. Our next cohort is going to start uh, June 12th. Um, and uh, we'd love to have them in the next apprenticeship cohort. How old is he? Yeah. So yeah, as long as he can do some of the physical stuff, we're gonna be running them and hiking them and doing a lot of that. He, he, he's, he's absolutely, absolutely good to go. Um, Adrian, can you stand up for a second? That's the man that you need to connect with right there. Actually, could all of the ARC peeps in the front and in the back stand up real quick? So if you want to connect with any of our people, uh, those four cats in the back right there, these two in the front, um, feel free to connect with them, but we'd love to have them in the program. Just have them come in ASAP and sign up. Cool. Thank you all very much. of his time dismantling the law, I wonder